Hi, fifth graders. Welcome to lesson 1.1, Place Value and Patterns. The essential question for this lesson is, how can you describe the relationship between two place value positions? Now, please turn in your GoMath workbook to chapter 1, lesson 1, found on page 3, and let's get started. Okay, let's start out together by taking a look at question number 1. As you can see, question number 1 has already been completed for you, but it's a good model for our place value and patterns lesson. Question 1 says, 40,000 is 10 times as much as 4,000. Now, when I look at that problem, I'm going to first of all focus on the 40,000. I'm going to come right down here in the middle, and the first thing I'm going to do is, I'm going to write down the number 40,000. Now, back up, in my, back up in my problem, I also see the phrase 10 times. So what I'm going to do next is this. I'm going to move to the right of 40,000, and I'm going to write a number that's 10 times less than 40,000. And that's just like taking off a zero. So I'm going to write down the number 4,000. Now I'm also going to move to the left of 40,000, and I'm going to write down a number that's 10 times greater than 40,000. And that's just like adding a zero. So that number turns out to be 400,000. Now, these become my two answer choices for this problem. My answer is either going to be 400,000 or 4,000. So what I know is this. Looking back up in my problem, that phrase 10 times as much as has a meaning. That means the same thing as multiplying by 10 or adding a zero. So when I look at my answer choices, 4,000 or 400,000, I ask myself, which of those two numbers can I multiply by 10 and get to my 40,000? Well, I know that I could take 4,000 and I could multiply it by 10, and that would take me to my 40,000. So I know that 4,000 is the right choice for this problem. Once again, the question says 40,000 is 10 times as much as 4,000. That 40,000 has one more zero than 4,000 does. It's 10 times as much. Now, let's take a look at question number two. Question two says 90 is one-tenth of blank. Now, similar to problem number one, the model question that we just worked, what I'm going to do first is this. I'm going to focus on my 90. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to write down right in the middle the number 90. Now, just like before, I'm going to now write down a number that is 10 times less than 90, which is going to be a 9. And all I've done is I've just taken off the 0. Now on the other side, I'm going to write down a number that's 10 times greater than 90, and that's going to be my 900, which means I've just added a zero. Now I'm going to go back to my question, and it says 90 is one-tenth of blank. Now the phrase one-tenth of means the same thing as dividing by 10. So I have to ask myself, out of my two options or my two choices, 900 or 9, which of those numbers could I divide by 10 and it take me to my 90? Well, when I look at those two numbers, I know it makes sense to try the 900 because if I were to divide that 900 by 10, it's going to take me to 90. It's just like taking off one of my zeros. So I know that 90 is one-tenth of my 900. So I'm going to write down 900 as my answer to this question. Now, let's take a look at question number three. For question three, the problem says 800 is 10 times as much as blank. Well, once again, I'm going to focus on the number that's given, and that number is 800. So I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to write my 800 down. And once again, just like we've been doing, I'm going to write a number that's 10 times less than 800, and once again, that's like taking off a zero, so that would be 80. And I'm going to go to the other side, the left side, and I'm going to write down a number that's 10 times greater than 800, which means I'm going to add a zero, and that number would be 8,000. Now remember, this time I'm looking at the phrase 10 times as much as, and that phrase, once again, 
is like multiplying by 10. So I asked myself, which of my two numbers, the 8,000 or the 80, could I multiply by 10 and it take me to my 800? Well, I know that I could take my 80 and I could multiply 80 by 10. And when I multiply 80 times 10, it's going to take me to 800. Because once again, multiplying by 10 is like adding a zero. So I know that 80 is the right choice for this question. So I know that 800 is 10 times as much as 80. It has one more zero than the 80 does. Now, let's take a look at question number four together. Question four says 5,000 is one-tenth of blank. Well, once again, I'm going to focus on the number that's given, and that number is 5,000. So I'm going to come down here in the middle, and I'm going to write down 5,000. Well, I'm going to move to the right of 5,000, and I'm going to write down a number that's 10 times less than 5,000. And remember, that's like taking off a zero. So that number would be 500. I'm also going to move to the left of 5,000, and I'm going to write down a number that's 10 times greater than 5,000, and that number would be 50,000, because remember, that's like adding one zero. So I know that the choices for my answer are either going to be 50,000 or 500. Now, when I look back at my problem, I see the phrase one-tenth of. So I have to remember the phrase one-tenth of means divide by 10. So I have to ask myself, which of my two numbers, 50,000 or 500, could I divide by 10 and it take me back to my 5,000? Well, I know that I could take my 50,000 and I could divide it by 10, which is just like taking off a zero, and that would take me to the 5,000. So the correct way to complete this sentence is 5,000 is one-tenth of 50,000. Now, let's take a look at this next section together. The directions say to use place value patterns to complete the table. So we're going to work numbers 5, 6, 7, and 8 together, and we're going to look for those place value patterns to help us complete the table. So I'm going to start out with question number 5, and for number 5, the number that's given is 100. Now, for the first section in the table, it says, I need to find a number that's 10 times as much as 100. Well, remember, when I see the phrase 10 times as much as, that means multiplying by 10. And if I'm multiplying by 10, it's just like adding an extra zero. So I'm going to take my 100, and to that, I'm going to add an extra zero. So what I know is 1,000 is 10 times as much as 100. Now in the next section, it says to find a number that's one-tenth of 100. Remember, one-tenth of is just like dividing by 10 or taking off a zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my 100 and I'm going to take off one zero. So my answer here turns out to be 10. 10 is one-tenth of 100. Now, let's focus on question number six. Question number six gives us the number 7,000. Now, once again, my first job is to write a number that's 10 times as much as 7,000. So remember, I'm going to take my 7,000, and because it's 10 times as much as, I'm going to add an extra zero. So what I end up with is 70,000. I know that 70,000 is 10 times as much as 7,000. Now, in the next section, it also asks me to find a number that's one-tenth of 7,000. And remember, one-tenth is like dividing by 10 or taking off a zero. So if I were to take off a zero from 7,000, I end up with 700. So 700 is one-tenth of 7,000. Let's try question number seven. They give me the number 300. My first job is once again to find a number that's 10 times as much as 300. So I'm going to once again take my 300, and to that, I'm going to add a zero. So what I end up with is 3,000. I know that 3,000 is 10 times as much as 300. Now on the other part, they asked me to find one-tenth of 300. So once again, one-tenth of means 
dividing by 10 or taking off a zero. So if I have 300 and take a zero away, I end up with an answer of 30. Now, I want you to try question number eight on your own. The number that's given is 80, and I want you to find a number that's 10 times as much as 80, and I also want you to find a number that's 1 tenth of 80. So pause the video and I want you to come up with an answer for that problem. Now, if you came up with an answer of 800 is 10 times as much as 80, you are correct. And if you came up with an answer of 8 is 1 tenth of 80, you are correct. Good job. Okay, fifth graders, get your pencils ready. We're going to do this one together in class. Now, let's take a look at question number 13. It's one of our real-world problem-solving questions, and it says, The eatery restaurant has 200 tables. On a recent evening, there were reservations for one-tenth of the tables. How many tables were reserved? So as I read through that question, I notice a couple of things. I notice that there are 200 tables in the restaurant, and also that there were reservations for one-tenth of the tables. So I'm going to focus on that 200. There were 200 tables in the restaurant, and one-tenth of the tables had reservations. Now remember, when I see that phrase one-tenth, it also means divide by 10 or it means take off a zero. So if I were to divide 200 by 10, that would take me to an answer of 20. Another way to look at it, if I were to take my 200 and just take off a zero, that's also gonna take me to my 20. So I know that 20 tables were reserved at the restaurant. Now, let's take a look at question number 14. It's another one of our real-world problem-solving questions, and it says, Mr. Wilson has $3,000 in his bank account. Ms. Nelson has 10 times as much money in her bank account as Mr. Wilson has in his bank account. How much money does Ms. Nelson have in her bank account? As I'm reading through that problem, there's a couple of things that stand out to me that are important here. I know that Mr. Wilson has $3,000 in his bank account, and I know that Ms. Nelson has 10 times as much money in her account. Well, I'm going to focus on that $3,000. Now, that's how much money Mr. Wilson has, and it says Ms. Nelson has 10 times as much money. Well, I now know to associate the phrase 10 times as much as multiplying by 10 or adding a zero. So if I take 3,000 and I multiply that by 10, it's going to take me to an answer of 30,000. I've added a zero. So what I know is Ms. Nelson has $30,000 in her bank account. Okay, fifth graders, here are your homework questions for tonight. I would like you guys to complete question number one and question number two, as well as numbers three through six. And these questions can be found on page four in your Go Math workbook. Now, don't forget to assess yourself. Somewhere on your homework page, I want you to let me know, do you feel like you're number one a novice? You're just starting to learn this. I don't really understand it. Number two, an apprentice. I'm starting to get it. I still need some coaching. Number three, a practitioner. I can do it by myself, but sometimes I might get stuck. Or are you number four an expert? I understand it well. I could teach it to someone. Now, once again, don't forget your homework for tonight. I would like you guys to complete question one and question two, as well as numbers three through six. And once again, these questions can be found on page four in your Go Math workbook. Have a great evening, and I look forward to seeing you in class tomorrow. Bye.